Bueno, mi nombre es Oscar José Blandón Dávila. Yo anduve en la lucha contra el gobierno de Anastasio Somoza. Anduve en la guerrilla. Hasta que triunfamos, triunfó la revolución en el 79. En ese tiempo existía de que venían bastantes amigos cooperantes de, de diferentes países, de diferentes países a ayudar a, a cooperar en lo que se llamaba el desarrollo de nuestro país en los años 80. Había muchos amigos, amigos de, de Nicaragua, por decir así. What we're doing here is this development project. Mainly built by Nicaraguans and installed here in Nicaragua. And we're going to see lights in San Zedo After 16 years of persistent fighting and seven weeks of outright civil war, Nicaragua's Sandinista guerrillas today savored a total victory over Anastasio Somoza. By the thousands, the people of Nicaragua are pouring towards the capital of Managua to celebrate the revolution. But for the Sandinistas, today was more than Independence Day. Today, Managua was theirs. Even as the celebrating goes on, the rebuilding has begun. But Nicaragua is in desperate need of outside help. Every day there was news coming out of Nicaragua's front page headlines in the United States. There were news stories about Nicaragua. It was really exciting, especially for a journalist or a budding journalist. Nicaragua seemed to be like the center of the world. I consider myself a supporter of the revolution. Absolutely, otherwise I wouldn't have been there. To me, I wanted to see what, what, what the, the experiment of a revolution was going to be. I had decided at the end of my time in college that I was going to go visit Nicaragua at the end of it. It was clear that in Nicaragua, someone had come up with a way of describing the problems of the society that made sense to a lot of people, to a broad spectrum, and I was interested in that. <laughs> The internationalists earn little or nothing working on projects to improve the lives of the long impoverished peasants. Some come for short periods, working on construction projects like hospitals or housing. Nicaragua is a country full of broken machines, and I fix machines for a living. And I got myself involved in teaching Nicaraguans how to fix machines. The day I graduated from Evergreen State College, a woman that I had known vaguely at school came up to me and handed me a piece of paper, and it had Ben Linder's name and address on it in, in Managua, and said, this is the name of an engineer who is working in Nicaragua. You know, I was a little bit in awe of him because, you know, he described going off in the truck up to the jungle and deal with this microelectric hydro power plant. And it was, it was just, it was like my fantasy about what I'd love to be doing. Having a light bulb in the school means you can have classes in the evening. If you have classes in the evening, it means that the workers from the area that have to tend their fields or work in the coffee harvest during the day can then have classes in the evening, which is so important. Ben was an engineer, um, yeah, and that, you know, that stereotypical engineer with the little engineer clothes and the little pen in the pocket and the glasses, the little glasses, and just, you know, his enthusiasm for all things technical, such as the electricity. Um, but, you know, the other part of it is that he was also a clown. I mean, that was the other way in which he would, you know, relate to people. <laughs> Our 
I remember one time he came to the house where my boyfriend and I were living. He knocked on the door and I opened it and there he was with his unicycle. And I didn't, I didn't even know that he had ridden a unicycle or he was a clown. I was sort of taken aback to have this guy with the unicycle at my door. Ben Linder came to the door one day wanting us to make some part that he wanted for something somewhere. He walked into my house and he saw a set of Dubé Aerolite clubs, the same that most jugglers carried in those days. We were immediately in the back of the building, throwing them back and forth. And everybody's talking about why some hydroelectric plant somewhere in the middle of nowhere doesn't work. And I just basically said, you know, it's like a pump, except it's backwards, right? The water goes in and the electricity comes out. And it was quickly realized that the person who had the skills to actually finish the job was me. And the next thing I knew it, I'm out in the middle of the countryside. Bueno, mi nombre es Oscar José Blandón Dávila. En el 79 yo anduve en la lucha contra el gobierno de Anastasio Somoza. Anduve en la guerrilla. Triunfamos y me quedé formando parte del ejército. ¡Que viva la tierra y Augusto Sandino! Pensaron en, en, en lo que se refiere a la, a la pequeña planta hidroeléctrica. Fue parte del gobierno sandinista de los años 80. El tiempo seco que aquí hay en la montaña solamente dos meses, solamente es abril, es marzo y abril nada más, y el resto es pura agua. So this area is just uh, it's hydroelectric country all the way up and down, and most of the time it rains, and uh, that's all you need is water flowing downhill. And the project strategy is based on use of local resources and training local people. It's a way that local people can meet local needs that they define. En lo que significa para nosotros pues más que todo le estamos dando un avance más al 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 poblado que tenemos aquí no más en el Cuá y con la ayuda de de la revolución y de los países amigos pues nos hemos dado a dar a andar el trabajo. Viva siempre la The Sandinista rule is a communist reign of terror. Thousands who fought with the Sandinistas have taken up arms against them and are now called the Contras. They are freedom fighters. Part of the Contra strategy was this low-level war where they would blow up health centers, put landmines in roads. They were basically trying to paralyze the countryside. When there is progress in a place, Entonces los grupos armados que están en contra del proceso, eh, ellos buscaban cómo desbaratar, destruir los objetivos económicos. Eh, 
Entonces, el, con, el, con el conflicto de la guerra, este, ya los ingenieros de Manao no les gustaba venir aquí. We couldn't find an electrician. There were lecture, there were competent electricians in Nicaragua, and we couldn't find one that would come up there. So we all learned as we were going along. Y así, pues, fuimos, fui, en, entre todos fuimos aprendiendo lo poquito que, que nos había enseñado, unas famosas orquídeas que ya hemos inventado con Donald ahí para para los postes. Somebody had swiped a copy of the American uh, Rural Electrification Manual. And that's what we used. Electricity. About time we got around here. Well, it sure would help me out, and the woman too. I hear there's an agency, rural electrification. None of us had ever climbed a pole before. I had all the equipment. I took out the manual, and I read how to do it. I'm terribly afraid of heights, I, uh, and everybody knew it. But I went up and down, and then I got a crew of four, and I started teaching them how to do it. I was basically translating the book. And Donald, a mí me enseñó los primeros pasos de instalar una bujía eléctrica para que dé luz. Y con él convivimos muy muy de cerca, con Mira también trabajamos a veces hasta de noche para garantizar la luz al al poblado, al centro de salud, a los enfermos, muchos heridos para el tiempo de la guerra y todo eso. Oscar was a former Sandinista revolutionary, and his wife, Hilda Granados, never had a high school education. She understood electrical circuits better than anyone else I trained. She was the smartest person to ever walk through that project. This is the canal that conduces to the plant that contributed Benjamin. O sea, como vamos para la presa. Bueno, que la, la agua que está corriendo es la que da funcionamiento a la planta que está ahí abajo, que es una turbina, la que da electricidad para así llegar hacia el poblado. Este, Benjamín Linder fue la primera persona que me contactó para que yo trabajara, que yo me sintiera mal pues decir de que solo los varones pueden hacer eso, si sí, yo lo podía hacer. Entonces comencé a trabajar con, con ellos. Ahí nos conocimos con Benjamín, conocí a Mira, conocí a Donald y fuimos creando una amistad entre ellos. Now wires swing out to the country, They're stretching out, long wires reaching out where wires never went before. This pole has been a liberty tree to thousands of farm families. There was an inherent irony in what we were doing in Nicaragua. What we were doing was very civilian, and it had been done in the United States uh, not so long ago. And it was very strange, because, you know, Ronald Reagan was walking around talking about us as if we were the biggest criminals since the Nazis. My fellow Americans, you know where I stand. The Soviets and Sandinistas must not be permitted to crush freedom in Central America and threaten our own security on our own doorstep. There was a lot of red baiting, an incredible amount of red baiting. Any of us who lived in Nicaragua, we were communists. You know, anybody whose work made um, the revolution uh, function and make the revolution make the advances that the revolution had promised became a target. When you talk to any of the Nicaraguan people, it's clear that their fear is not the Soviet Union, their fear is not communism, their fear is the constant attack on the people of Nicaragua being supported by the U.S. government. a lot of controversy among the Americans who lived in Nicaragua whether they would actually take up arms against you know the US government or not. In Managua is more of a theoretical question but out in the villages it became a matter of life or death. So by the time Ben moved up there he had gotten used to the idea that it was no longer a place you could go unarmed. Don had flatly said, you're going into a war zone on a government economic development project without weapons, you're insane. And I followed Don's lead. And 
the other thing we did was we turned on a power plant. Well, when you turn on a power plant, even a hydro power plant, you make a lot of noise. So the situation changed drastically because we had turned on a target. The electricity is coming out of here, out of the powerhouse, up to the transformers on the pole and going into the 10 kilometers of distribution line. So far, it's been operating for a week and a half and we haven't had any problems. I just happened to be the person at the front desk the day that Ben came in yelling into the house, there's electricity in El Qua, we have electricity in El Qua. Ah, we ahora con la luz de un medio hora un adelanto enorme que no lo habíamos que no se había visto. El Qua ahora es un municipio que prevalece en el norte. We wired the bars. We wired every one of those bars. Somehow that was an understood priority. The town suddenly had a bit of life. Mucha, mucho desarrollo con la luz eléctrica, hermano, te digo sinceramente. Y están los cuatro servicios de la, de, la, de la escuela. La mañana, por la tarde y por la noche. Tenés también las emergencias del, del centro de salud. Aquí ahora hacen, hacen ultrasonido. Se dan cuenta a través de la televisión qué es lo que está pasando. Y el pueblo se hizo muy demasiado grande. would have been, a, and is, in fact, um, a big symbol of what the revolution was trying to do for people. And that wasn't lost on the people politically in charge of the Contra back in Honduras. Nicaraguan freedom fighters have never asked us to wage their battle, but I will fight any effort to shut off their lifeblood and consign them to death, defeat, or a life without freedom. There must be no Soviet beachhead in Central America. Esta esta casa era la casa que nosotros habitábamos con la familia porque se le nombra la casa de donde trabajan los operadores. Una noche normal estuvimos, tuvimos una, habíamos estado en una alegría, así fue, ¿verdad? Sí. De allí cansados ya en la noche, a las 12 de la noche, porque teníamos que estar constantemente en la lectura de la planta. En cuanto a eso, nosotros escuchamos los primeros balazos, ah, dice Oscar, la contra. Entonces fue cuando yo le dije a mi esposa, amor, salite por acá y te vas con los niños para que no, no, no te vaya a pasar nada. Yo para mientras ustedes se corren, yo me quedo volando tiros con ellos y defendimos el centro de trabajo. Con mucho orgullo, porque hijos de puta, nos querían ver muertos, pues, pero fue al revés. Nosotros, nosotros le, 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 le ripostamos mejor. Don realized that it was getting worse, it was getting more dangerous. Then he also had the idea that, you know, as a foreigner, as a development worker, you know, he might be targeted. Ben and Mira, 
were very, very happy that the lights had gone on El Qua and very enthusiastic. And so they decided to work on another project about two hours further up the dirt road. It was also further into the war zone. And so this was an area where people were suffering because of the war. And they needed something like this light, this great symbol, um, to remind them of what the suffering was for. The Contras knew that a group of people had been working on a dam for um, a certain number of days. They knew that every morning this group of people arrived at a certain time. Aquí a escasos metros donde estamos, al lado norte, eh, aquí ellos amanecieron, amanecieron esperando a, a, la, a la gente que venían al trabajo, a Benjamín, ¿verdad? Y e, ellos no lo miraron, entraron directamente a su trabajo aquí y ellos no observaron nada. Eh, Benjamín estaba sentado con una libreta de apuntes y fue en ese momento que una onda expansiva de una granada de mano le quitó la vida. He was um, initially disabled and then um, dispatched with a point-blank shot at the temple. I'm getting in the van and the driver says, they killed an American. And I am sitting down and I said, who is the American that got killed? And they said it was Ben Linder who worked up in El Qua. And I mean, as I'm telling you this, I can feel the shiver going through my body because I was in total disbelief. But I remember in that moment feeling that the world should stop. That, um, that somehow or another, the world should just stop because it just killed somebody that was doing good things. Fue algo que, que nosotros nunca entendimos por qué, lo, por qué lo mataron. Es cierto que fue, hablándolo así, fueron gente de nuestro país también, pero sí, mandados o apoyados por otro gobierno. Y que no entendieron qué era lo que él en realidad quería con nosotros, los nicaragüenses. A mí se me hizo duro cargar en mi espalda los restos del ataúd de mi amigo, llevarlos hacia el cementerio, es una cosa bien impactante. Entonces, este, discúlpame que me da, me da emoción, me, me siento bien, bien molesto. Y, este, es duro, porque vos sabés que es un amigo, un hermano, y... ¿Por quién doblan las campanas? Escribía Hemingway. En medio del fuego que incineraba al pueblo español. ¿Por quién doblan las campanas aquí en Nicaragua? Por Benjamín Linders, 27 años, norteamericano, ingeniero. Él sabía de los riesgos de trabajar en Nicaragua para contribuir con su conocimiento, 
con su dedicación, con su ejemplo, a mejorar las condiciones de vida de la gente del campo. A hundred thousand people can die in Nicaragua's revolution and then the ensuing contra war. But they shoot one, you know, good looking young American engineer, and suddenly it's an issue. Conflicting reports tonight about the death of the first American to be killed by Nicaragua's Contra rebels. Benjamin Linder was a volunteer working for the Sandinista government on civil projects. President Daniel Ortega of Nicaragua delivered the eulogy himself. Village children Linder had taught to juggle and clown were there too. It will be very difficult to, to say. It will depend on a lot of different things. Is this Is the lady from the embassy gone to, uh, gone to identify the body? No. Why? Not yet. Uh, because the body is, is kind of being moved around. I think it is a sad fact that in order for Americans to really feel the pain of what was going on in Nicaragua, that one American had to die. Then that brought the Nicaraguan War to the United States. The subcommittee meets today to explore the issue of U.S. volunteers in Nicaragua. And what he wanted to do was to bring hydropower to this, to remote areas in the country so they could become self-sufficient. The reason I find this so difficult is I, I don't want to be tough on you, but I really feel that you've asked for it. I think that you're asked being here, I think you're being here it. today. It's been less than three weeks since your son died. That was and about the most cruel thing you could have said. He what right did we have to be down there interfering? None other than the fact that we were welcomed by the people whose country it was. What is freedom if you don't have the freedom to go out and peacefully work for what you wanted to do because you believe it's a good thing? Linder's death doesn't seem to be discouraging American volunteers from going to Nicaragua. The killing of one of those workers, Ben Linder, by Contras last April, has led to more donations to the anti-Contra cause. In fact, the death of Ben Linder has done nothing to quiet the activism. They will risk their own lives, so the deaths of people like Ben Linder will mean something. But the work there is being carried on, thanks to many Nicaraguans, as well as internationalists. In this time, when when the death of Benjamin. Después comenzó a bajar el flujo de la, de la guerra. Comenzó a hacer, a comenzar los, los primeros contactos de los seis y el fuego. Al saber de que Benjamín muere, Rebeca retoma la, la iniciativa de, de Benjamín. ¿no? La luz nos ha dado de todo, de todo, de todo. 